I'm good. And you? Uh, by the grace of God, I'm doing well. Uh, first, Doc, let me first start by taking your general impressions on the delegates' conference that's put together over the uh, the, the, the three-day period, the, the speeches you had, um, and, of course, the outcome. Okay. Um, let me say good morning to your listeners and express appreciation for this opportunity to uh, join your discussion. Um, actually, I really didn't have too much time to go through the speeches that you read. Uh, but I followed the whole thing general. You know, I was engaged in some other way. And and my general impression is uh, some sort of, you know, um, misgivings because uh, time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. And if you really let it go, it, it's not uh, redeemable. And, and so I was really disappointed that they said we were going to start around 10 o'clock and we started, you know, quite late into the day. And that is, to me, very significant because it's symptomatic of the way we do things in our parts of the world. Um, time, when used properly, you know, efficiently translates into development, translates into uh, goods and services that definitely bring improvement in the life of people. So for a party in government, which has been around since 1992, have gone through this exercise a million and one times, and, and at this critical moment, you want to demonstrate something slightly different, especially now that many of us believe that the economy has been mismanaged. And, and if you can manage your own such, uh, uh, I mean, program, you know, uh, time-wise, then it's problematic. Problematic. It doesn't speak well of us. It doesn't speak well of the ruling party. That is what I would say initially. Okay. Uh, so your, your first observation is the time. Um, but what do you make of how the election went? Uh, that is an interesting thing. Uh, I like to believe that it was an outcome for two because uh, ordinarily I expected the party to go in for a complete change. I expected the party to try to extricate itself from what I see as a stranglehold by Nanaru Danko Kufuado, he captured the party's chair, brought in a complete outsider. Ordinarily, in the MPP, you, you, you see a tradition emerging. So ordinarily, given what they say about themselves, then you simply didn't expect a uh, fair play to become a chair of the party. No, it shouldn't happen. But then he did become. The party goes ahead, I mean, previously, uh, defied their own constitution, and dealt with uh, uh, Mr. Afoku and Mr. Japon the way they did. So, you see, constitutions go a long way to provide a base, foundational elements for organizations and even for state constitutions, not by themselves, but in a way that the rank and file, the elite in the organization and the mass, uh, 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 I mean, the members, the rank and file, if they give themselves to their constitution and are prepared to voluntarily work with it, give it their voluntary consent, the readiness to work you know, with the constitution and be guided by it, especially in taking such critical decisions as appointing officers, removing officers from post. You define your own constitution. You are really dealing with the very foundation of the constitution. You throw everything else overboard. Arbitrariness you know, set in. Seriously, you know, these things are dead to your death. You easily understand why Africa is not doing well. A certain sense of discipline, self-discipline, that we need. That is what happens to constitution. In the United States, just in the recent uh, uh, past, you know, Trump's final days in office, several officers have to stand by the constitution of the United States of America and tell the president your action will throw the country into constitutional oh, crisis. And so they will not do what Mr. President wanted them to do. That is the way to go. But if here, after our history, the checkered path 
political path, and we still behave this way, then, like I said, we are still marking time. We are still marking time. We are not ready to move forward as a country along the developmental path. We are not ready. Everything is leadership. And if the leaders don't show the way, everybody else decides to do what he or she wants. You know the biblical thing in the book of Judges that in those days Israel had no king. And everybody did as he or she, you know, uh, saw fit. This is what is still happening in Ghana. Although our democracy is bumping along. We have a problem on our hands. You said you expected a whole change. You expected the party to at least take off the stranglehold of the executive. In the end, did you see that? There's a semblance of that. Although some people are giving it other interpretation. There's a semblance of that. I'm waiting to see the actions and inactions of the new leadership before I can come to a conclusion. Otherwise, looking at it superficially, yes, that's, that's true. Uh, a crop of people that have been sidelined for a long time, and then new faces too, that came in strongly to challenge, if you like, establishment uh, candidate. So you, 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 you get a sense that, you get a sense. But it, it, it's dicey, because... Uh, uh, people are arguing, you know, strongly behind the scenes that there is no change and that the establishment has had its way. So uh, w one will have to wait and see how the new leaders, you know, go. What power they will, whether they are going to be allowed to exercise the authority that the party's constitution really, uh, if you like, uh, uh, creates for them. Whether they are going to be allowed to be themselves, this is what we really are, are waiting patiently, especially in the days leading to the election of the presidential candidate. So it's very difficult for me to conclude, actually. Who and who, in who and who do you see the, the semblance? Because they said, they said there's a semblance of the party attempting uh, to at least gain a level of independence. In which candidate's election, do you see that semblance? I see that of the chair. I see that of the uh, general secretary. And, and to me, that of the chair is significant, given, given, given the nature of the office. Okay. But, uh, because in the lead up to the election, it, it did not seem the establishment actually had a problem with him being elected this time around. That is the impression I get. And it is an issue between the establishment, uh, you know, uh, coming to terms with some reality and so staying away and allow the electoral process to have its way. Or the establishment compromising this person on its own principles and values. And if you like, co-opting him, co-opting is critical in politics. And, and I suspect cooperation. The other person who came from nowhere, uh, Justin, Justin Frimpong Kodia, who is now General Secretary. First of all, did you even anticipate that John Buedu will lose uh, to Justin Frimpong Kodia? Uh, I, I, I didn't expect John Buedu to win simply because of the way he came into office and simply because of the fact that is so much of an establishment down. And I expected this change. And so, although um, I wasn't sure who was going to win, but I didn't expect John Bobby to I expected to see some dynamism in the MPP. If you don't have some such element in an organization, it dies gradually. There should be some such dynamism that will enable the party to resist some of these efforts to capture, you know, the party. If the party doesn't resist it, with time, it will die. It will die. I mean, it may not fade away, but it will become insignificant. And and people, will, the very members in the party will take themselves seriously. And gradually, they will be fading into insignificance. Well, so... <laughs> Essentially, Chairman Secretary, 
you have uh, vice uh, chairpersons. I think there are two people in there who were not predicted to win who came in. Uh, there are also uh, the national organizer is the, is the candidate that they chose. The national women organizer is a candidate that they picked. I understand the national treasurer is also the same. National youth organizer is also seen as an establishment uh, candidate. What really needs to be done to, to, to perhaps, if the party really wants to create an independent entity, that may sometimes stand up to government, take a, hold a different opinion, and perhaps come in to create a balancing act in these difficult times? Is what we call seeing uh, constitutionalism so in the actions and inactions of these leaders, meaning allowing the constitution to take on a normative form that should reflect, that should be seen in the way the leaders go about their duty. So as much as possible, you know, constitutions create the framework within which politics unfolds is the same for organizations, is the same for states. So in the MPP, if we are to see whether these newly elected leaders, in spite of what has been said, are acting genuinely as independent individuals exercising their own best judgment, then it should reflect what the Constitution says they should do. They should wield the ultimate power in the past. Hmm. There is the already the talk of uh, breaking the eight. You, if you listen to the national chairman, did not mention it, but the newly elected general secretary actually mentioned it in um, his interview to the press, where he said they work to break the eight. What do they need to do if they really are? going to break the eight. It's late. There's practically nothing they can do. They cannot work out much. Just last week, here in Kumasi, at Kumasi Magdin, where the uh, mechanic workshops have put themselves together and created almost a township for themselves. They were out in the street and openly shouting, MPP, we have regretted voting for the MPP. And this sort of chorus is now coming out so much in Ashanti region. It is late. It is late. Where are they going to take the money to do what? And the, the, the whole indiscipline that goes into the implementation of projects, are they going to let it go overnight? Are they going to become born again, you know, uh, 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 citizens of the state, addressing themselves seriously to the public interest? It is late. Doc, they have two years. It is late. Uh, it, it, the, the lateness aspect and the issues you raise look like you're still going back to the issue of the government. The fact that because they can't change the attitude of the government, there's nothing really they can do. You see, there are two issues in government. Policy, policy implementation. And in most cases, they got their policies wrong. In most cases, they were all populist. They never allowed realism to, to set in and took on an arrogant poster. They would not even listen to good advice from their own party. And they used that poster, bravado, to shut people in their own party up. There are key individuals in their own party who have demonstrated skills and understanding in working in government. And because they have been captured as belonging to a particular faction, they are out. All these things are not going to go away overnight. It's a human behavior, and human beings don't change that easily. And in this particular case, too, it's tied up to the amassing of wealth, and people want to continue to amass wealth. It's late. Doc, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kwesi Amache is a political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Now, he talked, he mentioned the name of Mr. Freddie Blay, who came from nowhere and became national chairman of the party. Let's listen to what the president had to say about him. 
before I sit down, I want all of you to join me in saying goodbye to a man who was not originally with us. He belonged to another political tradition, but who saw virtue in our party and its values and decided to join us. Not only did he decide to join us, but when we had our crisis in 2015, and a handful of our members attempted to sow, to sow unnecessary seeds of discourse and confusion in our party. Where you go? He stepped forward to take charge of the affairs of our party and led us as a recent convert. He led us to victory.